Um, was cemented with this next song that I'm going to play here, which is a, a song that I wrote and Phil made a, a CD uh, of all the greatest songs that was written about Liverpool and he sent it to the legendary John Peel. And um, John Peel, out of these 30, 40 songs, he picked ours to champion. And every time he played it on air, John Peel would, uh, would, would break down and he'd have to play another song after it. And when uh, his wife, Sheila, went on air on BBC One for the first time ever, she said, after he died, she said, this is the one song that John would have wanted me to play to commemorate his death. So we're going to play that song now. So I'm going to do this for Phil and for Neil and everybody in the picket. So I know all you people coming down tonight to celebrate this fucking great place. So God bless you. This is called Does This Train Stop on Merseyside? Mackenzie's soul lies above the ground In that pyramid near Maryland Easy jet, it's hanging in the air Taking everyone to everywhere Whoa. See the sled ships uh, my name's Ian Prowse and I'm uh, the singer and the songwriter in a band called Amsterdam from Liverpool and I've been an old friend of the picket both in the old venue and this new place here. Um, my relationship goes with Phil who runs the picket goes back a long time from when I was in a band called Pele. Uh, and basically uh, we've done stuff with Elvis Costello which came through Phil at the Picket. Christy Moore's appeared on the new Amsterdam album and it's to do with Phil at the Picket. So my connection is massive. And uh, I love them, you know. I even, uh, I think it was Phil, either Phil or Wiley that took me out to Istanbul to sing my uh, well-known song Does This Train Stop From Merseyside to 20,000 drunken scousers before the game in Istanbul and I don't even support Liverpool, I'm a Trammy Rovers fan. But they took me out there to do that song, you know, and uh, and so I appreciate that, and I appreciate coming here. So when I got asked to do this tonight, you know, I'm, I'm first up. Even though I they couldn't, I couldn't get all of Amsterdam to come. I'm prepared to come along with me acoustic and do my thing. So the strange thing about this picket is the actual the venue itself is actually better than the old one. The old one could be a nightmare on certain nights to play, you know. Uh, but this is uh, this is actually a better venue. It's the first time I've played it. But the sound on stage is better. The sound out front's better. Does this train stop on Merseyside? Boston babies bouncing on the ground. So what happened with the picket was that we had a space up in Hardman Street and the organisation was losing money that we were part of. And they sold their building because that was their biggest asset. The consequence of that was we were made unemployed. All the people who worked in the music aspect of it, the picket, and uh, we had to look for new premises. I um, spent about a year or so going around the city and talking to the council and saying, you know, I want to continue this concept. I want to keep a music venue that puts on local bands and puts on and has a connection with the community. And is, um, at the concept of the picket was uh, worth, was valuable and needed to be uh, continued. Um, Fortunately, through public pressure and political pressure, we were able, and through the, the imagination of uh, Jane Casey, who's a colleague of mine, we found premises in an industrial uh, unit on the edge of the city. On the edge of the city centre, really. It's not the edge of the city, because the edge of the city is somewhere else. And the city centre itself is quite small, isn't it? It is, yeah, Liverpool, and that's what I love about Liverpool. When I was in a band, we had a record label or um, released an album, and the label was called The Big Village, because, you know, Liverpool is a big village. And in the background, we've got one of the most, you know, recognisable landmarks. So, but, but what's happened... What there is, I think, at the moment in Liverpool is there's a sort of 
terms of the music culture, there's a sort of Slater Street, Bold Street, Seal Street um, village. And that's okay and that's cool. I like that. You know, I was asked before about um, what's compare Liverpool now, 2007 to the 80s. The picket in the 80s was the only venue that existed putting on live music for local bands. You've got the Zanzibar, you've got um, Barfly, you've got um, Metropolitan, you've got Jack and uh, you've got loads of little pubs and bars that aren't putting on local live music. So it's great in that respect. Um, but people tend to be lazy sometimes when we just go from bar to bar. Um, and that's why that's one of the criticisms of where we are. Maybe be something as special as I think Pick it is and what we do here and the quality of what we do here. And, you know, PA is great. It's 20 years of experience being in the band, putting on music um, and managing the band. I know what bands need, I know what performers need to sound good. And every band that plays here without, you know, most of them, 99.9% of them say, Sound system's great. It's uh, it's hard work, but it's the work I want to do. Because it's my home, my kids, my grandkids, my family, my community. It's my city, and I, you know, it's my birthright. And I'm not going to give it up because people decide to buy property. You know, my my philosophy is that the world's a common treasury for all of us to share. How can you own land anyway?